I grew up in a Christian home, evangelical, 90s Christian culture, listening to CCM music, DC Talk, Newsboys, Audio Adrenaline, going to youth group. Some of you know what I'm talking about. Some of you may not. But in the 90s, the big verse that all Christians knew was John 3, 16. For God so loved the world, gave his only son, that whoever believes would have everlasting life. And kind of the idea of Christianity growing up for me was we needed to get saved so that when we die, we would go to heaven. And we needed to try to get other people saved so that when they died, they would also go to heaven. And so for me, it was all about eternity being when we die, we'll go to heaven one day and we'll get to be with God forever and then trying to get other people to accept Jesus as well. But there wasn't as much attention given to what's happening in this life. And I'll never forget uh, when I read John 17, verse 3 for the first time, and this is the prayer of Jesus. Uh, This is the longest recorded prayer we have of Jesus in the scriptures in John 17. And there's this little verse in John 17, 3. He says, this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. And I remember the light came on for me. And I said, wait a minute, eternal life, everlasting life. This is not just something that happens when we die and we go to heaven one day, but eternal life is relationship with God. Jesus says eternal life is that we would know God and the Son of God, Jesus This changed everything for me. I began to realize the purpose of Christianity was actually relationship with God, not just getting people saved and getting saved out of hell to go to heaven one day, but that even right now we could have relationship with God. So the first chapter is about love, the purpose of prayer. And that's my first big truth for you today is the purpose of prayer is love. The purpose of of prayer is love. And one of the reasons we struggle with prayer is because we don't have the right understanding of what the purpose of prayer is. But the reason God has uh, allowed us to communicate with him is to have relationship with us. Uh, Every relationship requires communication and prayer is our communication with God. And the purpose of it is to facilitate relationship with him. It's not just to get something accomplished. God can do whatever he wants, right? God is sovereign. Psalm 15 says, God is in the heavens and he does what he pleases. So God doesn't need anything. He doesn't need prayer, but he desires prayer. He wants us to be in relationship with him. This is his heart. Every relationship requires communication. So when God is inviting us to pray, he's inviting us to know him. He's inviting us into that eternal life. He's inviting us into that love relationship with him so that he can show his love to us. We can show his love to him. We can connect with him and grow an intimate relationship with him. Nearness, closeness with him. He loves us and he wants us to love him. That is at the heart of prayer. Jesus, in Matthew chapter 22, he's asked what is the greatest commandment? And, you know, I think about uh, as, as a young Christian growing up in church, if someone had said, what's the most important Bible verse in the Bible? You know, I would probably have said, oh, there's not an important Bible verse because the whole Bible is important, right? But Jesus actually answers it. He says, no, there's certain things that are most important. All of the Bible is God's word, but what's most important? What's most foundational? And here we go, Matthew 22 Verse 35, one of them, a lawyer, one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, what is the great commandment in the law? And he said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the great and first commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Jesus says there is something that's most important, and it's love. Love is the purpose of Christianity. Love is the purpose of prayer. This is why Jesus came. This is why he died. 
This is why we've been redeemed, because God wants to have personal, intimate relationship with us, and sin separated us from God. Jesus, if we put our faith in him, uh, we have been reconciled to God by the blood of Jesus through what he's done at the cross. And now we can have that eternal life. For God so loved the world, he sent his son. Why? So that we could have everlasting life, which is not just heaven one day, but it's relationship with God. And this is our joy in prayer. If you want to enjoy prayer, understand that the purpose of prayer is relationship. It's not just to get things accomplished. It's not a duty, but it can really be a delight. We can experience that joyful prayer when we think about prayer in the right way. The second big truth I want you to understand is that God desires intimacy. So it's one thing to say prayer is about relationship with God, which it is. That's important. Uh, But what kind of relationship does God want to have with us? And that's important too, because we can have shallow relationships. We can have acquaintances that we kind of know. We can have surface level relationships with people and with others, but God doesn't want a surface level relationship with us. Uh, He doesn't want to just be our acquaintance. He wants us to love him deeply and he wants intimate relationship with us. And that word intimacy can kind of get weird for some people because they go, wait, wait, what do you mean by intimacy with God? And, And just to be clear, we're not speaking about anything sensual, but intimacy in our hearts, intimacy in our emotions, opening up our hearts to God and him opening up his heart to us. This is the kind of love that God wants where some people say intimacy is into me, you see. So the idea is that we open up ourselves and allow God to know us. And of course, he already knows us. But are we willing to disclose? Are we willing to be transparent? Are we willing to be vulnerable and honest and raw with God in the kind of relationship that we have with him? This is what we can experience through prayer. And actually, this is where the joy is. This is where the delight is, is when we discover the intimacy with God that he desires. I believe Song of Solomon 2.13 is God's invitation to us. He says, arise, my love, my beautiful one, and come away with me. He's inviting us. He's beckoning us to come away, to experience his love and to be his beloved, to be loved by him and to love him in return. In Matthew 25, there's a parable that Jesus teaches about the end of the age, the end times. And he he describes these uh, 10 virgins who I have oil lamps and uh, I have an oil lamp right behind me right now. And there's a oil lamp on the cover of the enjoying prayer book, because this theme of oil in our lamps is key because the oil represents intimacy with God. And here's how the parable goes. There's these 10 lamps and they're waiting for the return of the bridegroom, which represents the return of Jesus. And they all fall asleep. And at the midnight hour, there's a a sound that goes forth that the bridegroom is coming. And so they wake up, but half of them have oil in their lamps and they can light their lamps and the other have run out of oil. So their lamps are dry and they're not able to light their lamps. And so they're not ready for what's coming. They're not ready for uh, the return of Jesus. And it's clear at the end of that passage where Jesus says that those who did not have oil uh, are told, depart from me, I did not know you. And so the key here, the difference between those who have oil and those who don't have oil is do we know God? Do we really know God? Knowing God means we have oil in our lamps. It's the oil of intimacy. And I don't mean do we know about God? Do we have the right facts and doctrine? That those things are important and good as well, but they're not necessarily relationship. Do we know God? Do we have intimacy with him? So I believe that oil represents the oil of intimacy. And God wants us to have oil in our hearts, to be full, to be ready, to be connected to him 